developers don't like to use, I think. I don't know. And from that one company who made some amazing films and some not-so-amazing films, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order EA. So, yeah, this is the one that everyone said was just like Dark Souls because it was Star Wars Dark Souls. And it came out in 2019. And I uh, never played it. So I finally played it now because there's a sequel that came out. Um, and, you know, better now than never. Right? <laughs> That's just me. I'm always late to the bandwagon. So, yeah, I mean, I heard good things about this game, and I have owned it for a while. I just never got around to it, as I do with most of my uh, gamings and things like that, right? <laughs> but, yeah, it's a pretty cool intro, you know? I like seeing all the, the ship graveyard and the probe droids, and there's a sarlacc pit here. Um, yeah, nice, lovely intro to start the game. So we're going to be going over some story bits and some cutscenes, but primarily we're here to see all those boss fights, because again, this game is literally just like Dark Souls, and literally just Uncharted. Um, it's a fun game. I enjoyed it. It was not perfect. Um, I had a lot of performance issues. I was playing this on PS4, because I have a digital PS5, so I don't have the, um, the, the disc drive for it in this game I have on disc. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that was just a PS4 thing or the game in general. Performance was not the greatest, but overall I enjoyed the game. I do feel that most of what it does is, yes, taken from other games and not done as well as those games. Like the Uncharted climax stuff is not as good as Uncharted. Um, and like the, you know, Soulsy like combat. It's funny, I, everyone compared it to Dark Souls, but I would say combat-wise it's more like Sekiro. Because you have some cool fun abilities, and you block and break down enemy stamina to deal damage, right? That seems to me like a Sekiro thing, which is funny, because Sekiro came out earlier in the year. And of course we gotta have fun action set piece moments like this. Lots of moments of uh, sliding down objects and items and things and stuff, because, you know, it's fun, because why not, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know anything about the new one, Jedi Survivor, I believe it is. I haven't watched a single trailer, a single gameplay video. I don't know anything about the story, so I would appreciate it if you're watching this video and you're commenting on it, like, not to spoil bits for me, please. You can tell me just, you know, if you liked the new one. Um, I heard it was okay, but uh, from the sounds of it, it sounds like it's, um, you know, stuff that uh, I'm not the biggest fan of when it comes to lots of AAA game design these days. Um, I also like how, you know, they use the Force more in Expanded Universe, because like in Star Wars, we, we don't really see them go too much into using the Force stuff in the original trilogy, probably due to budget and special effects constraints, right? So I like how all that stuff that we, you know, presume could happen, can happen, and will happen in Expanded Universe games, you know? Like, it's a thing people always joke, like, you know, why don't Jedi just constantly turn the other person's lightsaber on and off in a duel? And we've established through some of these games and um, the, the newer movies that that is a possibility. And maybe you want to say that's not canon or something like that, because it's Disney Star Wars, not George Lucas Star Wars. But, I mean, you know, it's it makes sense, right? Why, why wouldn't you be able to do that, right? <laughs> Like, it's always fun in video games when it's just easier to animate or stories and books than you can just go full-on crazy with the, the spectacle, right? So, yeah, we are introduced to our protagonist for this game, Cal Kestis. And he's awesome because he is Ginger. We love Gingers. Gingers are the best. They're a dying breed these days. And, you know, I like... Uh, the setup to the story and little bits, and uh, it's a good introduction, right? Definitely starts off with the more uh, uncharted story, action beat vibes, and uh, then we 
get into that more. Uh, Dirk Solzy Sekiro Bloodborne combat later. You know, it is important to note that it's, you know, Dark Souls didn't invent third-person hack-and-slash combat with RPG elements and character building. It's just the easy comparison now, because you can say it, and then you don't have to explain it, right? Like complaining if it's cringy Marvel humor, well, it's just, it's Marvel humor, it is what it is. It's Dark Souls, it is what it is. Um... And, you know, I guess it's intentional because this was probably developed with input from Disney. Um, and, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi show was input by Disney, but it is kind of funny how a lot of these, both this game and that show, have very similar uh, plot points and, uh, and elements to them. Similar imagery, right? Um, spoilers for the show and for this game, of course. If you're watching a video on it, you should know what you're getting into. But the main antagonist being, you know, a uh, imperator, the uh, you know, a second sister, who you know has a connection to being a prior Jedi, who was then you know tortured and brainwashed into being an evil Sith uh, apprentice or you know Sith supporter, um, who then you know goes through a change of heart uh, in the end to help the hero, right? And then, of course, there's the big Inquisitor Fortress we go to later on. Very fun stuff. Um, and yeah, I feel sad for, for what's his name, Prov. I feel sad for him because he puts on this whole big, like, I am Spartacus thing. But, like, did it actually really accomplish anything? Like, I guess he distracts them for a bit, but, like, they end up attacking Cal anyways. And, you know, the, the, what's it, the one sister, or whatever, what is it, fifth sister, right? She just, um, throws him off a ledge. Also, no. That's the rule of Star Wars, someone always has to yell no. I don't know, maybe it gave him more of a chance to attack, I'm sorry, ninth sister, not fifth sister. Second sister, and then there's third sister. And hey, fall damage still doesn't exist in the Star Wars universe, that's nice. And yeah, here we go. It is time for some light saber ownage. But I waited for a bit to see like what kind of dialogue we would get. That's the one great thing about this game. The dialogue is awesome, specifically the Stormtrooper dialogue. I like how you just hear them kind of like mucking about and, you know, hanging around and just chilling. It's fun. Especially when sometimes they get all like, yeah, I can take down a Jedi by myself. Or also when they get all like, oh god, oh man, oh god, oh man, oh god, oh man. And, you know, this is cool. We have a train sequence here, and it's like the train sequence from Uncharted 2. Because Uncharted 2 did such a great train sequence. And, um, you know, now, here we go, we have train sequences and everything. And again, I know Uncharted 2 didn't invent train sequences, but it's one of the best ones. I was actually replaying Uncharted for fun. I'm not going to make a video on that, though. I I don't really know what gameplay I would show, and uh, I don't really know if there's much of a point me, um, you know, making a video on a over 10-year-old game that doesn't have boss fights, and that's kind of what you guys are here for. I think you like the Dark Souls videos. You like the Elden Ring videos, right? Yeah, don't you? Speaking of Elden Ring, oh, Shadows of the Earth Tree when am I right? And here we go, this is our first official boss fight, which I had a feeling like this is going to be the one where the game just, like, throws a tough boss at me, and I'm going to have no idea what I'm supposed to do, and I get my ass handed to me, and, you know, then we'll fight her throughout, right? And that's pretty much what it is, again, kind of funny how this follows the same uh, Genichiro Ashina um, progression of Sekiro, where the first time you get pulverized, and the second time, it's a pretty tough fight. And then, well, the third time, it's a bit different because, you know, she goes uh, uh, full-on beast mode in the in the third fight. She's not really the same fight. Or I guess there is that third mini fight where you just fight her for a couple of minutes or so, and then you win. But the cutscene says you lose. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I don't know what the general consensus 
consensus. I think the consensus was that this game was good, but not great. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Um, I'm interested in the sequel, but again, we'll see, because I've heard some stuff that, like, I don't know, they do, there's, like, pointless base building or, like, house management or, you know, managing your house or your garden, and that, you know, I already... I liked the Metroidvania aspect to the game where you unlock abilities and find new places, you know, like some good old school Hollow Knight stuff. Funny that I call Hollow Knight old school. <laughs> Speaking of which, Silk Song when? Um, also, I like this, you know, it's, I always wondered, like, you know, why why don't, you know, Siths and stuff, when they're, they're watching the ship fly away, can't they just, like, do some fancy jump or something, or, uh, you know, do, do something about that, right? <laughs> like, the number of times that Darth Vader watches a ship just float away from him in the original trilogy, and then I love how in Expanded Universe they have to make up for that by being like, oh, wait a minute, no, you could just go reach out your hand and go, no, don't. <laughs> so I like that. Again, more proper expansion of the use of Force powers. But where was I? Metroidvania. Yeah, so I don't like how the Metroidvania element is 90% just unlocking cosmetics and stuff. Like, I don't care about that. I mean, I'll customize my look at my lightsaber if I have the options, but it's not like I was thinking, like, oh yeah, I, I gotta find the new lightsaber skin or the model or something like that. Um... And so then they doubled down on that in the sequel by making it so you unlock, like, facial hairstyles, I think. And, eh, that's weak. <laughs> so, anyway, basic story. We're on a quest to find a holocron that will lead us to uncovering a bunch of Padawans who we can train to be the next generation of Jedi. And we arrive at this planet, uh, Bogana, and here we have Ogdo Bogdo, who is... Um, again, this this game's version of, um, like, Tree Sentinel. You know, he's a guy that's supposed to kick your ass because you don't have stuff to fight him, and you're weak, and you don't know how this game works, and he's supposed to teach you a lesson, or you're supposed to not find him right away, right? Come back maybe after you've unlocked your Estus flasks, or, sorry, the, the stims, right, from BD1. <laughs> Um, but of course, all of us are masochists, so we insist on fighting him right away. I found if you, you come back and, uh, you know, like you move away and then come fight him later like that, you get a stealth hit on him, you know? But it's tricky because he has fast lunge attacks, um, and you can only take two hits and you have no healing. Um, and then also, you, you think that you're supposed to, you know, sever the tongue. You can't actually do that until you have upgraded force pull. Um, I thought you had to, like, freeze the tongue and, like, slice it, but no, that's a waste of time. That only took me, like, five or six attempts. Felt pretty good about that one. Yeah. Also, my lightsaber is orange. So on uh, Pogano, we find out we have to go towards this place, Cepho, where there's like some ancient race of aliens that had like ancient mechanicians and maps and temples and stuff. So basically the Protheans from Mass Effect. And I know, again, Mass Effect didn't invent ancient race of aliens. Many games have done that before, but I'm going to compare them to the Protheans. That's what I do. So uh, on our way out, we do a whole quest and there's a lot. Again, I'm not going to show every bit of the story. I feel like there's plenty of footage to fit out a two-hour video um, on this one. But we get to fight uh, Rich Evans' favorite vehicle of all time. A-T-S-T, A-T-S-T, A-T-S-T. Because it broke no ground. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't have a random does Red Letter Media inspired ASMR, huh? On your bingo list for 2023, but, it, you know, here we are. So yeah, I like fighting the ATSTs. They're fun because you get good use of the force push power for the concussion grenades. Um, I didn't even really bother with trying to attack up close because I just was like, oh, you know, 
I can force push rockets back at people, so I'm gonna force push a rocket back at you. And of course, I'm a blocking champ. <laughs> um, so yeah, fun fight, indeed. Um, I got a lot of the boss fights, it is like, you know, reoccurring stuff. And, uh, oh, hi dude. Look, I'm gonna kill you now so you get spared the embarrassment of having to listen to Chewbacca do the Tarzan yell in Return of the Jedi. Speaking of Chewbacca, here we are now at Kashyyyk, our next destination, where we gotta find uh, the rebel forces that are uh, fighting, uh, helping the, the Wookiees fight the Empire. Yeah, and Saw Gerrera is here. He was from Rogue One, right? Everybody loved him. I don't know, Saw Gerrera is an interesting character, though. I feel like he's been more neutral in, like, the more recent stuff. We've seen him like this, and he was in Andor. I'm thinking about doing a video on lots of the Star Wars movies. Because, uh, you know, there's always stuff to say, right? Everybody loves hearing everyone else's opinion on Star Wars on, on the internet. Um, so I might do that, but maybe just the main movies... I don't know if I have enough to say about the shows to fill out an episode. Um, I liked Andor. I didn't love it, though. I thought it was really good, but I think they could have used a better editor. Like, I don't mind that the show is long and slow, and I like that it takes its time and it's not just about action, but... I don't know, some of it I felt was like... I don't know, it was like they had a script written for your standard eight episodes that you usually have for shows these days. And then they got told they were greenlit for 12, and then they had to figure out how to make it 12 episodes. So, like, when the good moments happen in Andor, it's really good. But, um, I don't know if it was worth the wait to them. And, um, people make a big deal about a lot of the speeches that people give their speeches. And people make speeches about stuff, and they talk a lot. And most of those big speeches ultimately boiled down to, hey guys, you know, I think fascism is kind of bad, right? Maybe we should do something about that. And I mean, you know, hey, I can agree with that sentiment, of course, absolutely. Um, but, you know, after hearing like the third or fourth speech about that in like a two episode span, I was kind of just like, yeah, guys, I, I get it. I get it already. <laughs> Oh well, I'm just being a cynic though, and I thought it was very odd to end the uh, the season on like a cliffhanger as to whether Andor lives or dies. I'm like, I don't know, I know he dies eventually, but um, I think he's gonna make it out of this show for now. But we'll see. I am glad they've confirmed a uh, season two. I want to see more of this show. And I might actually rewatch it, you know, maybe, maybe I'll have a better perspective on it. I feel like people were really quick to love it based on that it was different in a good way and not different in a bad way. Um, but yeah, so anyway, we're going to climb up an ATAT or a at at if you prefer, because this one's all covered in your good old climbable vines. Yeah, this isn't a boss fight, but I got to include this man. We got to climb up an ATAT, okay? Who, who never wanted to do that, right? Like, Luke did that for a bit in, in Empire. And Empire's the best movie. I know, real controversial opinion there, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess I shouldn't talk too much about other Star Wars movies. I mean, I should save that for videos on the Star Wars movies. But, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. You see, I've, I've kind of slowed down in the video making as of late. And that's just, like, due to, like, different life stuff. Um, it's all good. Don't worry, everything's all good in my life. But it's like I've been busy with, like, good life stuff, right? Not as much time for, you know, playing games and making videos. Um, and especially with the heat, it gets difficult to get in front of the camera because, like, I just, I, I don't do well in the heat and I feel gross and I don't look good. And I want to look good in front of the camera. Or at least, like, you know, as good as I can look, right? Um, so, yeah, we'll see. But maybe I'll do more video game videos, because then it doesn't matter what I'm doing. Because there is no camera to be in front of. It's all audio. That might be nice. 
Um, yeah, so, you know, we'll see if I do more uh, video game videos. This is fine. I thought, am I going to ride the speeder bike? No. Okay, we're just going down. Okay. Um, yeah, this is also giving me very Uncharted 3 vibes with the plane sequence. Um, yeah, I love how these guys are just regular guys and stuff like that. Like, really hitting that whole uh, Kevin Smith clerks bit from uh, Randall about your average stormtrooper, you know, doesn't know how to, like, unclog a toilet or whatever, right? <laughs> yep. Just like Geralt said, never know why um, a bunch of random bandits think they can handle a witcher. <laughs> never know why. But yeah, so maybe I'll focus more on some uh, video game videos and I don't have to appear in front of camera, but those will take longer to make because I gotta play the game and then edit the footage, and then narrate it, and then edit the narration, you know. But I think people like the gameplay videos the most, so I guess it's worth the wait for you guys. <laughs> and sometimes I just like chilling and listening to the dialogue, right? There's um, some fun stuff. <laughs> it's funny also, my power has continued to grow. My power. Because it seems like any time I plan on making a video on an old video game, uh, they end up remaking it. <laughs> like, dude, these guys are just talking about their family and I'm about to murder. <laughs> no, you guys have a lot of dialogue. We're just chilling. No? Alright, let's get on with it. <laughs> um... Yeah, so first it was Dead Space, and then it was Mass Effect, uh, and then it was Silent Hill 2, uh, and then it was Demon's Souls as well, um, and Dark Souls. They did, well, Dark Souls Remastered, but you know, it sort of counts, not really. Um, yeah, that seems to be the trend, and so the newest one I was thinking about was Metal Gear Solid. You know, because Metal Gear Solid's got lots of great bosses, and um, I've never actually played through every single one in its entirety. Um, I've played all of 3 and 4, and I've played a bit of 2, and a bit of 5, and I've actually never played any of 1. I've just watched the stuff from it. But, I mean, come on, say what you want about this game, and uh, you'll see the frame rate's gonna go, like you know, through the ground into the core of the earth of that load gets um, in the next cutscene, but I got a pilot and had at, so I'd say that's a win, you know. <laughs> I'm surprised nobody told me this was part of it. They talked about the bosses, um, and that's it. And hey, Saw Carrera, Forrest Whitaker, yay. <laughs> and here in in universe they call them at ats. <laughs> that's part of it, that's canon. Um, yeah, I know, it's, I, I have, there's a lot of fun moments in this game, but I feel like the internet didn't even do the best job of selling it. Uh, and you know, you can just like force push guys off a cliff and just, you know, do the, the oh screw this maneuver as I call it. Oh, don't want to fight a guy, force push you off a cliff. Don't want to fight that guy, force pull him closer and stabby stab. Um, but yeah, I was already thinking about doing it a series on the Metal Gear games. That would take me a while to do, because those are some very long games with lots of bosses and cutscenes. Um, and then they just announced they're remaking Metal Gear Solid 3. So I guess I have to, you know, do that, because I have to play original Metal Gear Solid 3 before they try to erase it from existence, right? You may be able to erase the markings, but the memories will still remain. Oh yeah, I got you, Kaz. Because, you know, Kojima is obviously not part of Konami, and we all know how well it worked when they made a Metal Gear-related game without Kojima. <laughs> so well, right? One might say they survived all criticism. Uh, and Kojima's off making Death Stranding 2. Uh, I still haven't made a video on Death Stranding 1. I've got lots of footage I could for that, I just never got around to it, because I'm such a procrastinator. Um, yeah, and then the other thing also is 
I've been working on lots of music and stuff and like working on writing and recording some originals because I'm very passionate about music. If you don't know, I've got a second channel I do music on, the Synthetic Overlords. Yeah, so I was um, working on that. So again, less time for uh, editing videos. So I'll do my best. I mean, that's how it is, right? Anyway, I've skipped the horrible frame rate cutscene, but we're moving on through Kashyyyk to help the rebels. And here's a perfectly innocent clearing, and uh, oh god, there is a big spider, so for you arachnophobes, you might want to look away. This is Albino Wushok. Why shook? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this guy actually got me a good a couple times, and that's what sucks about dying in this game, is at least for me, the, uh, the load screens is so long, it's like a minute and a half just to load in after you die and then you've got to get back to the boss and then you might die right away it uh, really sucks I've also I thought these guys were tough but then I realized if you block that big grab attack uh, at least not with this guy because him as a boss it's an unblockable move but the regular ones it's not unblockable and you do that and it gets you a stun um, and then you just get an insta kill move on him so that's nice. Also, I have a double-bladed lightsaber now because I went to Dathomir first. And that's where you encounter a random creepy dude that laughs at you. Again, totally not like Dark Souls. Um, and the plus side to going there is while the planet is very difficult at this stage in the game, you get the double lightsaber. And it's funny, at first I thought I wouldn't want to ever go back to single lightsaber, but then I kind of, uh, I kind of realized, oh, okay, they've got different play styles. One's better for single attacks and not locking yourself into a long combo, so, yeah, I guess I get it. Also, there was a bit earlier where there's some stormtroopers saying, well, at least we have the high ground. Yeah, 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 I see you there, prequel memes, very nice indeed. And uh, here we have a security droid, but he's not a bro like K2SO. He's a, uh, a not bro. <laughs> I think we need to pre-program him. <laughs> yeah, so security droids, it's funny. I feel like I never got the hang of fighting these guys because you can block the attacks and then they have like this one like slow lunge grab attack. Um, and I just feel like I almost never dodged it. It's like they would they would always time it perfectly as I was doing a combo. So I'd be like locked into an animation. And then if I tried to dodge, my panic dodge would be like the perfect length of time to get not got and then get got by the, uh, the grab attack. So yeah, not really a proper boss. Just like, you know, tough regular enemy that they throw at you with a health bar. But that's okay. We're on back to Cepho again, and now we have another uh, planetary boss. What do they call them? Interplanetary beasts. Rapid Shotas. So yeah, this guy, he's, you know, he's a, he's a thick boy. Alright, oh yeah, he's thick. Um, yeah, again, this guy surprisingly got me pretty good. Oops. Um, and that's the way it is on each planet. There's like, you know, different tiers of difficult enemies. And the final tier difficulty is taking the most difficult one, but making them a boss with um, not so much extra moves, but more like some of them are unblockable when they used to be blockable before, like the one spider crab attack, the albino Wyshukok or whatever it is. But, um... Yeah, it's kind of fun that you can go out of your way to fight bosses. But again, one thing why this is not as good as something like Dark Souls or Elden Ring or Sekiro is the guys you go out of the way to fight are just, you know, boss health bar versions of regular enemies. Um, you know, and, and there's only four of them. Everything else is a mandatory boss. So it would have been cooler if there was more unique bosses hiding out there, but again, that's kind of the AAA games thing. You, you don't want to uh, waste too much resources putting something really cool out of the way for the player, because they might not find it, and then you think that's a waste of time, so I like that Elden 
Elden Ring trusted its players. Also, uh, yeah, bottom of the elevator, the second sister, okay, I was not expecting a boss fight here, so I'm glad I rested at the not bonfire before. This game has bonfires, they're called meditation points, which are completely different. And it is funny though how, um, like, they respawn the enemies, again, no explanation for how that is. There was sort of a lore explanation for Dark Souls. It wasn't really the best explanation, but at least it was something. Here they're just like, eh, it's a video game. Don't ask questions. Uh, so yeah, we're back on Sevo descending into another tomb of one of the Sephonians, the the, 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 Sepho, the the Protheans, right? Because we need to, like, unlock different memories or something from BD-1 by proving we are a worthy Jedi. So the guy who left us the holocron will actually, like, unlock the vault for us, I think. Um, and yeah, I was kind of thinking, like, I'm not doing so well in this fight. Like, I've lost over half my stims, and I've barely, like, touched, like, an eighth of her health. And then I kind of realized, oh, it is, like, Sekiro again, where, you know, you have to, uh, whittle down their stamina up to then get some vitality damage in. Okay, I get it. Um... And again, the, the one thing, it's, again, kind of nice, kind of not, it's with the unblockable moves in that, you know, there's not really a tell for what is an unblockable move in terms of that, like, um, they just kind of sort of happen. And it's not like you have to determine whether it's a thrust or a jump or a dodge or a Makiri counter. Um, it's just simply you have to do anything to get not hit by it, right, which usually with me results in spamming dodge button. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Other thing, I don't know if this is, like, my eyes straining or something, or the fact that, you know, TVs these days are larger than what they used to be, but uh, I found I never really could actually pay attention to what my stamina was. Like, if I ran out of stamina, I never really actually knew that I ran out of stamina. The same thing, I would find out that I was out of force meter by trying to use the force and it not working. Also, just give me a chance to heal, please. Oh, the other thing I don't like is sometimes if you're in the middle of doing a thing, like, I guess it's nice that it's sort of an animation canceling, but it's like, you go to heal, and like, it does like the, the dialogue, like, yeah, BD, I need a stim, or, you know, give me a help, give me a hand here, right? Um, and, but, like, BD1 won't do that. Like, I remember one time trying to desperately heal during the final boss, and just, like, spamming the heal button, and he said, like, one of his heal lines, like, multiple times, but didn't actually heal. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, uh, she's definitely a fun fight. I kind of wish there was more, like, fights like this in the game, because they are very fun. They are challenging. But, like, in a good way. Um, I played on um, normal difficulty, right? It is the normal way to play normal. Not the easy way to play normal. Because, like, the way the difficulties were described, it seemed it was, like, easy, normal was too easy, and hard was too hard. Uh, and this is where I started panicking that I had no healing left, one hit from death, um, and I barely had it half health. So I thought, well, this was a, uh, a noble first attempt, right? But oh well, you can't beat every boss on the first try, that's okay. That's how it is. Um, and here I thought, like, that I was dead, because I got, like, locked into, like, a unbreakable one. And I took a hit there. I was like, oh, okay, this is an elaborate death animation. But then I realized, wait, no, I see what's going on. <laughs> what I had to do was just get her to have health, and then the game finished the fight for me. Yay, that is good. Glad that happened. First try. And of course, 
guys, this is where we have the big dramatic reveal as the twist identity of the evil person because that one obscure film called Empire Strikes Back did it and now everything Star Wars has to do it even if it doesn't make sense or if it's not actually that clever of a twist like y'all remember the cool twist when it was that Ray's parents were nobody that was kind of cool, it was different you know, because it wasn't going to be that she was Luke's daughter which was like the obvious answer and then they just retconned that in Rise of Skywalker and said, no, she's Palpatine's granddaughter sort of thing. Oh, and I forgot she takes off the helmet. Oh, no, she's a hot goth chick. No, now I can't fight her. Ginger soy boy, you know, hardcore evil goth chick, right? Golden Retriever and, you know, energy. Yeah, this is a good combo. I ship it. Uh, but it's okay, we're gonna get other goth girl later who's, you know, very, uh, hardcore Sundere, uh, vibes. Um, but yeah, kinda took me a minute to remember because I didn't remember if they ever told us Sears' apprentice's name, but it is Trilla. So, yeah, this is Sears' apprentice who, you know, Seer, like, got tortured and gave up her location. They captured Trilla and used torture devices to turn her into an inquisitor, and now she is evil and indoctrinated by the Reapers. I mean, the Empire. So, yeah. She's an interesting character. I like her in this. Uh, I do enjoy her more of a character than, um, oh, Moses Ingram's character in, uh, Kenobi, third sister. Um, you know, I didn't hate her, like, and I get you're supposed to not like her, you know, because she's a villain. That's how it is. You're supposed to not like villains if you don't like them, then the, you know, the show is doing its job. Um, I just, um, didn't really care much for, like, the arc at the end of it. I guess, you know, I felt she didn't really contribute much to the, um, uh, the plot at the end, but again, that's a rant for another day. <laughs> I didn't, you know, send horrible threats and insults to her because I'm not a man-child. <laughs> and yeah, we finish that fight and leave, uh, and we come across a bounty hunter who then cheats and uses the insta-stun move to stun lock us. He's got his own, oh, screw this maneuver. And his name's Clunk. <laughs> yeah, because he's got his own, you know, screw you, screw the rules, I win thing. And, um, yeah, so now we have a very long load screen that will get us to respawn in the arena, because these guys are part of the, 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 the gamble place, I forget the name. And yeah, there's like a big gauntlet of enemies you fight first, and they throw him at the end, and it kind of sucks. But I guess the nice thing is that, um, you know, if you die to the boss, like, the enemies stay dead, so I, you know, I guess I kind of cheesed it in that way. Oh well. <laughs> Just like the Clone Wars. Just like the simulations. Also, I can throw my lightsaber down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's um, it's a fun little, you know, creepy moment to the game. I like it. Um, and then basically after this point, then you're gonna be, uh, randomly attacked and invaded by bounty hunters. Which is kind of a nice twist, because now there's like that unpredictability to it. If you're gonna go into a boss fight, uh, again, it just sucks that there's only like uh, three types of guys you can fight. There's like, there's like, shield dude, and then robot dude, and jetpack dude. Or I guess there's a fourth, because there'll be shield dude, and then there'll be like, regular laser dude. Okay, where do I go? Let's get out of here. Where do I go? Where do I go? Oh, the big ramp. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Punch it, Chewy. Yeah, um, I don't mind the backtracking so much because, you know, it feels like the levels kind of change as you get more abilities. Um, it's kind of fun to go back to that Star Destroyer or the, the Clone Trooper ship, ship and explore all the way. That's nice. Uh, so we gotta go back to Kashyyyk, right? Why does everybody want to go back to Kashyyyk? And so and then we got Shield Dude and Laser Dude. Um, again, some of these guys, they can show up in random spots. Like, I got attacked by one of the robot guys in, like, the weird ancient catacombs. And it's like, dude, what are you doing there? Do you even have a permit for that sort of thing? 
Um, but it's kind of nice, you know, it's like, um, kind of like the, inv the NPC invasions in, uh, Dark Souls games. I like that, because, um, unpredictability just sucks that if you want to get invaded by NPCs in Dark Souls 1, you have to have not killed the boss, and you've got to be online, because chances are you're going to get invaded by a random person, and they'll either be giant dad, or like some scrub build where like they have the dark beads. Right. Oh well. But yeah, and I like the level design, it's cool. Again, I like Star Wars stuff, like, is it wrong that I'm not too overly critical of stuff, or like, um, you know, I just try to enjoy things where I can? Like, is, is that wrong? <laughs> Like, some people, they always get, like, they want a Star Wars thing to be bad, or, like, oh, they wanted the Lord of the Rings Amazon to be bad, and I, I, can I just want to hope that, like, Lord of the Rings and Star Wars content is, is good? Kind of like, you know, the two big franchises, right? I mean, and uh, my personal favorite franchise is Alien, of course. <laughs> um... Yeah, speaking of Lord of the Rings being not good, yeesh, how about that Gollum game? This is rough, man. If it was like some random indie game that you paid $5 for, that might be a thing. But that's like a quote-unquote triple-A full-price title with microtransactions and DLCs. Gollum saying, my precious is DLC. That's horrible. So... Yeah, we're going further up the big, you know, world tree from Pandora, or that tree that that one dark elf, or night elf, whatever she is, the, the elf from that, that big war game, the online one with the elves and stuff, you know, she burned down that tree, and it, and it made lots of people mad, I guess. Yeah, we climb up to the tip top of the tree for a spiritual journey, and we find this cutesy bird, Pokemon. Dragon thing, it's like that ho ho or Pokemon, whatever it is from like season one. I only know like season two and a bit of season three. Don't ask me on anything past all those other ones, right? This stuff gets too complex for me. Yeah, but we found that there was a splinter in its paw and we removed it, and the beast became our friend. Yay, we love cute bird Pokemon things. Part bird, part dragon thing. I like it. Yeah, this is a nice moment. I'm sure nothing bad whatsoever will happen to uh, said uh, show bird. Does everything in Kashyyyk have to have three Y's in the name? That's a fun name convention, I guess. But yeah. And now, turn around. Look at what you see. Answers to the never ending story. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> but yeah, this is a nice moment. It's cute, you know, it's a nice little character bit. And uh, the music's nice too. I like how this game actually lets the music breathe. And I like how they just said, screw it, we're using old themes from prior Star Wars movies. That's a good choice because Sir John Williams, my man, you know, don't mess with the John Williams. Um, and, you know, it's like, it's not that his score for the sequels was bad. There's a lot of good score in it. It's just the way the movies are done and edited. It doesn't give as much room for the music to shine, I find. Like, I think Last Jedi is the only one where it actually had breathing room, because Force Awakens and Rise of Skywalker were by J.J. Abrams, and those movies are just relentless, even when they shouldn't be. Oh, well. I liked Kylo Ren's theme, though. That was good. Um, yeah, there's a score-only version of Last Jedi on Disney+. Plus. I think I want to check that one out, and oh... Yeah, this totally isn't a boss arena of any sorts whatsoever. I'm sure nothing bad will happen to us here. 
like my custom lightsaber again. We were gonna get a new lightsaber later, and I'll show you my final version for that. I think I came up with something pretty cool. Oh yes, and on the way back, I see there is a lone bounty hunter. So I'm not gonna show you every single one of my bounty hunter fights, because that would just get boring. And again, I'm trying to like, you know, not go too overboard with the video. A nice balanced length of about two hours, I'd say. Um, so basically, if, if it was a, I wanted to try to get one of each combo, right? So we had uh, the fight with the robot, and then we had fight with the two gun guys. Now we have a fight with a solo gun guy. We're gonna do now a fight with a robot and a gun guy, right? You know, nice, uh, nice balance of, uh, of everything, all the different parts we got going on. I like this one bounty hunter is like Grand Moff in like quotations, you know, like it's the name he's given himself, but he's not actually a Grand Moff. Um, and I also like how they handle the duel fights, like they're kind of annoying, but also like in a nice balanced way where it's like a, a good challenge. So I like that. Um, and uh, there was like the other thing I kind of was worried about was like, you know, fighting multiple enemies in um, uh, in areas, right? Like multiple Imperial troops, right? How would that work? Um, and it is kind of annoying when there's a bunch of ranged guys just chilling, you know, trying to pick some shots at you while you've got melee guys. But then it's nice because typically your melee blocks will end up reflecting their bullets. Feels kind of very in line with using the force. So I like that. That's good. Um, and then, you know, usually the environments are decent enough that there's uh, good ways to do some uh, some crowd control. You know, and again, use space magic and cheat, right? <laughs> do you want to fight honorably or you fight to win? And I love that line from the guy, like, eh, he was it just in my way. Very funny. Guys are all in it for themselves. But remember, no disintegrations. As you wish. So then we got another bounty hunter fight. Um, this is with robot guy and jetpack guy, right? Who's uh, not Boba Fett. <laughs> you know, this is not the way. How about that uh, season three of Mandalorian? It was decent. It was okay. I mean, I'm not the type of guy to like, you know, watch a trailer for a show. Uh, and then post a big video with like, you know, um, words like woke or cringe or, you know, the uh, failure and, um, you know, characters with their eyes turned all red, like re, uh, I don't really make content like that. Some people do. And some people like to watch stuff like that. Um, I try to avoid it where I can. Um, but I also sometimes check in to see, you know, what's the What's the internet's thoughts on it, right? It's uh, how I have this thing. I have to know what other people think. Um, you know, even if I know I'm not going to like it. <laughs> um, and the general consensus is people seem to really hate on season three. Um, and I don't. I'm like, okay, well, you know, no, it wasn't as good as season two. But then again, I kind of figured it wouldn't be as good as season two because a few things in this world are as good as season two of Mandalorian was pretty much about as perfect as it could get for me. Um, it did kind of confirm the uh, thing I was worried about, which was that Mando would be used as a way to set up more of other character shows, because that's what season two started out as, and they definitely leaned a little too far into that in season three. I was worried about that, and they did that. Um, I didn't mind more Bo-Katan, because if all the ladies in this world get to have their absolute crush on Pedro Pascal in Last of Us, and Pedro Pascal's voice in, um, uh, in Mando, right? Pedro Pascal's bedroom voice as he uses it. If they all can have that, then I get to have Katie Sackhoff and the, her stance in that, that Mando armor just... Yes, more like Bay Katan, am I right? Uh, and then it's great because when you have Pedro and, and Katie together, you've got Mommy and Daddy, so it's perfect, right? <laughs> it's truly a good year for that. Uh, anyway, we're on Dathomir, which is, like, awesome because it's, like, part Doom, part Returnal, um, and part Mu 
Mustafar, and like, this is uh, Darth Maul's home planet. Because you see all these guys here, right? It's like, oh, that's like the alien that like Darth Maul is. And it's kind of cool, because then it makes it clear that like Darth Maul, he, he didn't just have red skin and stuff like that. Like it was all like tattoos and like face paint and stuff to make him look more, you know, you know, hardcore OG gangsta. So I like that. Um, yeah, pretty cool. And remember Returnal? Returnal was a fun game. They came out with a DLC for that game and I never actually played it. I kind of want to, but I also kind of don't want to go back to Returnal because the last time I tried that, I went into one of the hidden rooms and it spawned in a purple level difficulty guy that fired lasers everywhere and I, I died right away. <laughs> anyway, this is Gor Gara. Um, so yes, indeed, we can't stop here. This is bad country. But he wasn't a bat. He was a giant bat monster thing, but that still counts. And he's it's cool that he's a bat monster vampire thing, but it sucks because he's not nearly as sexy as Gary Oldman as Dracula in, uh, you know, Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Also, they got that last Voyage of the Demeter movie coming out. That's interesting, you know. I like a good horror movie, and I don't know if that's going to be a masterpiece, but I like the period piece element to it, and it's based off of Dracula, and Dracula's cool, because that's classic villain. Um, yeah. And this is a pretty fun fight, you know, the, the big beast element is handled quite well, I think, for this fight. Um, but the thing I guess that kept screwing me up is, I guess I'm supposed to force pull, not the body, but specifically the head of the beast, to like pull him down for a strike, and I don't know if I, I did that successfully like once in this fight. And, oh, you had a delayed AoE, man, that's not cool, you can't do that, that's a Dark Souls, oh. I guess it is just like Dark Souls. <laughs> and it's funny as well, because the thing that everybody pointed out, it does the old, uh, you know, door does not open from this side, or elevator uh, is inoperable at this time. <laughs> uh, but again, it's, it's how I view it, you know? If you get a hardcore copy, a game, you copy in Dark Souls, Sekiro, Bloodborne, and Elden Ring, and um, uh, uh, Uncharted. Okay, that's a good thing, you know. This is good. I like that. Um, also, it's funny because, um, I don't know, what is it? I was watching Breath of the Wild stuff, and then, you know, seeing how, like, Breath of the Wild inspired Elden Ring. That's great. Like, everyone made that comparison. Elden Ring, it's just Breath of the Wild and Dark Souls, right? Because it's, it's easy to just simply make a comparison like that rather than to actually have to explain what your thoughts on it are, and, oh, you got me, oh, he, there's two of them, this is getting out of hand, now there are two of them, all the Star Wars references, and it's actually appropriate for this video, oh, I got you there, man, I'm learning all your attack patterns, and I'm gonna be fantasy Batman, yeah, oh, and then it's also like Dark Souls, because you gotta read item descriptions and lore bits, like, in the pause menu, Oh, that's a thing, all right. Nope, you gonna do another one? Are you? Nope. Okay, that's good. Um, so yeah. Again, these are all good things, right? Like, if you're gonna take hardcore inspiration from certain games, I want you to do it from good ones. It's like a lot of people get mad at Greta Van Fleet for being like, these guys are just a Led Zeppelin ripoff. And while that is true, um, and I'm not the biggest fan of them, because, you know, it's like, they're fun. They're fun, right? Anything wrong with being fun? Can't you all just have fun, right? Um, if you're gonna rip off a band, Led Zeppelin is a good band to rip off. And it's also, I guess, a bit of poetic justice that Led Zeppelin ripped off everybody. And so now everyone's ripping off Led Zeppelin and the cycle continues. So, you know, makes sense. It's like Nickelback, man. I don't really like them that much or listen to them, but I don't get on the Nickelback hate train because, like, I don't know, they just they play fun rock music about partying and stuff and, and drinking and, like, I don't know, there's way worse.
worse music out there than that, right? <laughs> There's Tones and I, right? I'm a King Gizzard fan, but Tones and I does not want to make me visit Australia. Anyway, uh, here we have it now, another climbing section which leads to a very spectacle set piece boss moment. Um, side note, I don't like the climbing in this game because, like, they make it so when you jump on a wall, you have to hold L2 for just the second that you grab on. And that confuses me because it's like you grab and then you, you hold on to there for, like, a second or two. But then if you don't press L2, you just fall. Like, was that the game's way of making it so you didn't accidentally, like, wall climb? But that can press circle. Like, we, we figured that out in Uncharted. You know, in 2007. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, this is a fun bit. Um, it just sucks that it's, you know, kind of easy to mess up your timing. Because I guess I just have uh, bad uh, depth of perception. Like, okay, I got it. Come here now. Yeah, you're about... Oh, um... <laughs> through the power of reloading, I can get you... No, no, okay, I have to get the body, not the wing. Well, okay, first time's the charm. And now it's just like Shadow of the Colossus. And again, that's a good thing, right? Because any time you can reference Shadow of the Colossus is a good time, because that game is a masterpiece, alright? I thought, oh, are you gonna come to me? Nope, you just. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that the reloads are fast in this, though. I'm wondering if you can reload me that fast in this moment. Why does the reload take like a minute and a half for the regular thing? I don't get that, but oh well. Anyway, it's a fun spectacle bit. Cool bit. You know, you're, you're allowed to do a big over-the-top action beat like this. Um, it doesn't overly rely on them. I guess this might be a God of War thing as well. I haven't played God of War. That is another uh, video game I, series I guess I really need to make a video on. And um, I got God of War 1 and 2 on the PS3. Uh, and then I got the PS3, or sorry, the God of War 3 on like, you know, digital, so on PS5. Uh, and God of War, the God of War, God of War 4. God of War, Norris version, the fourth one, um, I have on PS5, and then I haven't bought Ragnarok yet, apparently it was good, I'm sure it is, but again, I don't know if I want to deal with modern AAA game trends of like, you know, overly long story, and uh, again, is it weird to complain that I feel games have too much gameplay these days, just specifically the story-based ones, it seems like, you know, they're not concerned about making a, a, a well-rounded, tightly packed and paced narrative. It's more about, like, just how can we make the game longerer? Because people don't like short games, so long game good, longerer, betterer, more time. And I don't always agree with that, right? Again, I just played through Uncharted in, like, three hours, and I loved it. It was great. I don't feel that game was too short. And I've replayed Uncharted 2 so many times, but I only played Uncharted 4 twice. Once for the main playthrough and once for the speedrun trophy. So we are now on Dathomir. We have Nidak Alpha. Right, this is like, again, the, the interplanetary super boss of it. And um, I'm trying to think what this guy reminds me of. You know, it gives me some kind of well, bloodborne vibes, right, you know? weird monsters and stuff, and, uh, yeah, there's undead enemies in, uh, in this, you know, there's zombies in, um, Star Wars now, apparently, and there's, like, weird magic that's, like, not the Force, but it is, but it's, like, weird witchy, gothy stuff, um, it's a thing, all right, it's interesting, I don't know, because it's a lore thing that, what's her name, Asa Ventress, Asai, Os Ventress, Ventress. Um, it's like from this planet, and then like Count Dooku like swore revenge, and he killed all the other Night Sisters except for one. Um, I, I don't really watch the Clone Wars TV show, so I'm sure for all the people who are into that 
you'll know it more. So then we get to the Jedi Temple. The weird temple thing, and like we have like a weird vision where we like fight a dark version of herself, and it leads to this big long Order 66 flashback where we see Jar Tapali or Jobu Tabaki, <laughs> Joju Budlapi, uh, get uh, killed by the clone troopers. Um, and again, this is great because it, uh, nice, good job, kid. <laughs> Uh, because it makes good use of John Williams, right? They just play the whole Order 66 music and stuff, and then the, you know, the Darth Vader revenge, or the Anakin's, uh, his, you know, his rampage on Mustafar, they just play all the best music from that. And again, that is a good thing if you have access to the John Williams library. You should use that. <laughs> But I also gotta give credit to, like, you know, shows like Mandalorian, where uh, Ludwig Göransson had the tough job of creating something that sounded Star Wars, but was not Star Wars. Um, I liked some elements of Michael Giacchino's score in Rogue One. Um, it's very obvious that he was trying to make a, uh, you know, sounds like the main theme, but not score, and he did a good job of it, right? It's like familiar enough that you recognize it as being the same notes, but not the same notes. But I guess for some people, they just were like, play the main theme already. And this is where I would want Harrison Ford to show up and just be like, kid, it ain't that kind of movie. <laughs> um, you know, if the audience is looking at that, they're asking the wrong questions. Also, apparently, what Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny kind of sucks. That sucks. I wanted it to be good, <laughs> but apparently it's like worse reviewed than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Eee, that's bad. That's the only Indiana Jones movie I uh, didn't watch multiple times. I watched it once in theaters and that was good enough for me. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, Jar Tabal, right, it's like the unwinnable fight, you know, he just wrecks your stuff, and, uh, he's voiced by Travis Willingham for Critical Role, that's cool, yay. But I also just think of him as the, the best guard ever from the Mass Effect Citadel DLC, right? <laughs> and so, yeah, there's like a big dark side presence in this temple that is, uh, trying to wear down and uh, weaken Cal's spirit. And so, you know, this is a cool moment because, again, I always wish we could see more of, like, the, the internal battle, like, physically manifested and represented in the media. Um, you know, we got a bit of a glimpse of that with that weird cave sequence in Empire, which was good, but I think it was also just kind of confusing. Like, Okay, as a kid growing up in the 90s and watching Star Wars on VHS, um, was I the only one who, like, didn't notice that was, like, Luke's face and the Darth Vader mask in the cave sequence? Because it's just on the little screen and it's not good quality, so I was kind of being like, wait, and it's, like, obscured by smoke. So as a kid, I was always like, wait, who was that? <laughs> wait, who did that? Wait, who killed Hannibal? Also, oh no, he swole. <laughs> and yeah, he's a guy. Darren Malikos. Who is he? I don't know. He's some kind of guy who's not good, right? He definitely looks like he belongs in God of War, though. Definitely some inspiration there, alright. Again, not a bad thing. Um, but yeah, then you had, like, the, the, uh, the cave sequence in Last Jedi, again. It's a discount remake of Empire for the most part, but in a good way. Uh, and that was a great scene too, like with all the clones of Rey, or like, you know, the, the snap in the fingers bit and stuff like that. Um, that was cool, I liked that. And that made me think, you know what? You know who should have directed Rise of Skywalker? David Lynch should have directed Rise of Skywalker. He would have done such a good job showing the representations of good versus evil in unique and interesting ways.
movies, and we know he has a way with good special effects because, like, you know, when he wants the effects to look good, he can. And you look at, like, the, the Twin Peaks Season 3 effects, and they're not good. But, like, it's not good effects in a good way that makes you feel, like, uncanny valley and just awkward and strange, and that definitely is a contributing factor to the, the feelings of those scenes, because it's all about the feelings, the feelings, the thing, when it comes to David Lynch movies. Also, is he dead or not? Like, he kind of just disappeared to ride the fun work train and stopped doing the weather reports, like, a while ago. And maybe he's working on some kind of project, but, like, it also would be a very David Lynch thing for him to just disappear into the ether, never to be heard from again. And here we have the Night Sister, and, you know, she's some goth person, Sister Marin. Again, I haven't played Jedi Survivor yet. I'm gonna guess that there's kind of some uh, cutesy romance that starts blossoming between them. Uh, I hope they do do that old thing like, oh, Jedi can't love, love is forbidden. Like, why? Like, I don't know, I, this, that there's reasons because George Lucas said so, right? Because she's a senator. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then I also just hope that she doesn't get frigid, you know? The, the love interest killed off to motivate the male character. I mean, sometimes things can do it right. Sometimes. Not all the time. Not most of the time, right? And, um, yeah, this is where Marin realizes, hey, the guy that looked kind of sketch and was strange, turns out he actually was sketch and kind of strange. Who would have thought? Okay. Um, but also that because he was like, hey, I like you, gal, like, I guess she thinks we're bad, too. So now she's gonna summon all of her necromancy and stuff to, like, awaken all the dead. Oh dear, yeah. <laughs> when you face one night sister, you face us all. Oh yeah, very nice. <laughs> and okay, that that's like totally like the, what do they call them? The, the, the doom guys, and, and it's the, you know, the rockets, and the skull guys, and they fly around with those revenants. Every video game has an enemy called revenant, right? <laughs> everyone. There's Revenants, and then there's uh, Guardians and Sentinels, right? <laughs> that wizard came from the moon. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, in a true old-fashioned spirit, book it, 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 indeed. I ain't got time for this. No time. I do not have the time. So you know what this means? More running. No, 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 I, I don't care about, about subscribing to your latest magazine issue. No, no, do, do you guys mind? <laughs> okay, 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 that, that, that's enough, please. <laughs> that's one thing, it is very easy to kind of get, like, stunt locked and stuff. A little annoying. Um, and especially, like, I just, I find it hard to re see the stamina meter, you know? Also, I like how I just sort of seem to casually walk walk on, like, yeah, because that here, there we go. Now that makes me think of Galaxy Quest. <sighs> Dead witches. Dead witches chasing me down. You know, in another universe, this might actually kind of be a fantasy of mine, but in this one, it's bad. <laughs> and yeah, you got the, uh, the weird eclipse sun thing. That's, okay, Dark Souls. <laughs> So we make it to the uh, the planet with the Kyber crystals, and we are going to take our crystal, make a new lightsaber because our lightsaber got destroyed. And I was having a hard time deciding which color. I decided let's go with uh, what is it? Um, not magenta. I went with I went with uh, I guess it's technically is indigo. So it's kind of bluish, kind of purplish, but not full on regular blue. You know. I mean, you can still change it later, but I thought, like, once I make this, I'm, I'm committing uh, to that color, you know, for lore purposes. Um, and yeah, we go through on the quest, and we see, you know, what other Jedi Padawans would have gone through through this quest to get their kyber crystals for their lightsabers. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Though, I guess there's more than one planet to get them on, because... 
because here we have an ice planet, but in Rogue One they said it was Jetta that was a source of kyber crystals. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is really cool what we do, because the kyber crystal's broken, so we take the bits of it, and then we fuse um, it together with the half of Seer's original lightsaber, so we then end up creating, like, this badass split lightsaber, and yeah, it looks great, and I guess I've heard that's a thing in Jedi Survivor, you, like, have, like, stances and stuff with, like, different lightsaber modes, and I... What is it? It's like, it's like Devil May Cry. You know, you've got like Royal Guard and Gunslinger stances and Devil May Cry is a fun game. I should, I should play through that again. I don't know if I can handle the super difficult version of 3 though. That might be crazy, but Devil May Cry 5 seems fun. And there we go. Badass split lightsaber. <laughs> oh yeah. That was good. Very great moment indeed. And oh. John Williams, man, you're awesome. I don't know, though, who did additional music, because I know not all the score is just original Star Wars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like a badass now. And then the game just has you go on a total killing spree um, with a whole bunch of, like, Imperial guys and stuff, and they just, like, invade, and, and it's a big battle, and you fight, like, a room with, like, nine security droids, and then you get BD-1 to hack them. And it's so great because every time he hacks them, what does he do? He does the like the like the da -da 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 theme. So that's fun. <laughs> so it's like that theme also canonically exists in Star Wars, apparently. Um, but then also like in Solo, they have the Imperial March, but it's in a major key. So like when we see like Vader chilling on his ship, the Executor, and we hear the Imperial March, is he, like, actually, like, listening to that, like, blaring that on the loudspeakers, because I can totally get behind that, you know, like, that was a thing, they'd have, like, like, you know, badass, like, drum songs for, like, Vikings and shit and warriors, um, and then, you know, they would, like, play, like, you know, Vietnam, they have, like, all the rock music to scare off people, and, you know, Apocalypse Now, yeah, I play music, Wagner scares the hell out of them, I hear that. They're gonna play music. <laughs> but on side war op number one, make it loud. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're fighting two ATSTs, ATSTs now. And uh, yeah, it's a dual fight. This guy, though, I think he kind of forgot what we were doing there, so okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, not a full on boss fight, but fun to include. Gives me a little more extra padding in the video to rant about certain topics and stuff. I feel like half this video I haven't even actually talked much about what's occurring, you know. <laughs> but yeah, this, I got many things to say, and you know, I need good prompts, and uh, that was the wrong force power. Oops. <laughs> yeah, see there, I healed, but like, it didn't actually heal, so I'm just spamming heal. Oh well. Um, these, these things are fun to fight. Uh, so yeah, is it a bit of a side quest thing? Like, you know, wait, wait, you can't go through the door to fight the big boss. You have to go around and do a whole quest on another planet. Is it extra stuff? Yes. But did I enjoy it? Well, yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> and so, yeah, now uh, Seer has knighted us as a Jedi, right? Or did I, did I include that scene, or did I cut it? I can't remember. I don't remember everything I include in my videos. If it's later, it's a great scene. If not, there's John Williams Force theme in there, and it's great. I actually get emotional at it. <laughs> and there we go. It's not having a lightsaber. I mean, I need a lightsaber, but it's not about the lightsaber, you know? It's kind of a weird thing, like, you know, we... We made it an original trilogy that it wasn't just about having a lightsaber, right? The Force was more than that. Then the prequels, they were kind of like, no, lightsaber's the best thing, right? Look at all the flashy stuff. Um, and now we've kind of gone back to, well, you, you do need it, but that's not everything. But it is pretty cool to have, so it'd be kind of, you know, it'd be a lot cooler if you had one, right? Oh, well. It's like, I mean, I know I'm... Yeah, probably in the minority on this.
this, I'm not a fan of the over-the-top flashy lightsaber duels and stuff in the prequels and what they do and things like I like I want to see cool stuff, but like, you know, I need some some emotion behind it. A lot of my favorite lightsaber duels are the original trilogy because of what's going on with the characters like the Luke versus Vader fights and the Obi-Wan versus Vader fight in a new hope has so much great quotable memorable dialogue that we all love saying and talking and referencing and so it's fine that the fight is not that flashy that's why i mean the the guys that made that um that you know scene reimagined that was really well done editing on their part and really cool but also i felt it was very you know unnecessary the fight i felt was cool enough but you know some people don't like that like that fight because it's you know just a just an old guy and a, and a guy in a mask who can't really see. Oh well. That's just my thoughts. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you didn't see it, but uh, Night Sister Mirror and she's on our side now because I simply said, hey, trust me, I'm a good guy. And she was like, okay, that is fine. I have a very serious sundry energy right now. <laughs> so yeah, and I mean, hey, I'm a, I'm a cute ginger, you know, right? The chicks dig me. That's nice, right? That's me as in Cal, not me as in me in real life. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, I do have a beard now. That is good. I was never hit with the ladies, but probably because I didn't have the beard. You know, that's how it is. Anyway, so yeah, now we're gonna fight this not Zeus, not God of War boss. Because we want the holocron. And he knows that he has it, and he's guarding it because he doesn't care about fighting the Empire. He's just gonna chill on his planet with his army of, uh, Knight Brothers and the Knight Sister, and yeah, but he does wanna rule. No, dude, I can't learn. I'm not sure if I fully followed all of the conflicts and stuff, but, you know, it's good versus evil, right? <laughs> the light side versus the dark side. I think we can all understand that. Um, you know, and, uh, bit of that whole, you know, critique of the, uh, the Jedi is still in there, right? It's, it's, it's a nice blend. But, oh, okay, he's also got dual wielding. All right, Akimbo. Let's go. Yeah, this is a fun fight as well. Um, I didn't die in it, though, uh, as opposed to the Ninth Sister, and he's got some cool moves, you know, he, like, throws the lightsabers and not just throwing them, but, like, spinning them in midair and throwing them around, like, it's pretty cool. I like his moveset. <laughs> Very fun fight. Um, he's an interesting bad guy, though, I mean, it is kind of like, you know, if you go to Dathomir early, he's some random guy you meet, and then you, you don't really remember him. Because I was like, oh, right, I meant, like, the weird old guy who laughs at me like every other Dark Souls game, I forgot about you. <laughs> Yeah, and then he kind of shows up back on the plot, like, by the way, remember me, the obvious bad guy? Guess what? I was the obvious bad guy all along. Uh, okay, then. Oh, well, I guess it's just nice, because, again, I, I wish we got more of these types of fights in the game. Like, long, epic boss fights and stuff with, like, you know, characters that are built up, right? As it is, we got Ninth Sister, who's just kind of a... Uh, mean person. She's mean. Um, but then, you know, uh, Trilla, second sister, and um, uh, Darren, they've got a bit more character to them, so I like that. Again, for me, it's not about flashy lightsabers. It's not about how fast you can, like, spin them around, or what cool laser light show you can put on. No, it's about feelings and people. That's what I think makes it most interesting. That's why I really liked the fight in Rise of, not Rise of Skywalker, in Force Awakens. It wasn't the flashiest fight, but there was a lot of emotion and feeling behind said fight. Uh, kinda sucks we didn't really get a traditional lightsaber duel in, uh, Last Jedi. Again, he was trying to do something different, though. And he didn't just want to do Rey versus Kylo again. And then Rise of Skywalker made us witness that, like, seven times. <laughs> And none of them were interesting. Like, uh, I get what they were going for with the Death 
star fight. It was like, you know, water as opposed to fire and lava from Mustafar. But um, it wasn't nearly as epic. And it's like they didn't even know what to do with Finn. He literally just runs around shouting, Ray. <laughs> and, ah, uh, yes, she's hot too. Awesome. Everyone's hot in this. Um, especially, um, what's his name? Grizz. Grizzy. My, my thick pilot boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a dual fight now. Now this is like the Abyss Watchers where, where the person who we thought was an enemy becomes a frenemy. And now she just helps me out and stuff like that. Like, look at this. Bam. And now I get free hits and yay. <laughs> so this is good. This is good. We're turning the tide. Yeah, like... I know. Oh, no. I gotta. No. I can't push those. I gotta dodge them. Okay. But yeah, I know, like, people make the memes like, oh, Finn's entire arc was just shouting, Ray, Ray, for three movies. And, like, it, it kind of. Like, I get it in Rise of Skywalker. He sees. Or, sorry, in Force Awakens. He sees her and is like, oh, hot chick. Yay. Me want smash. Like, I get it, man. Yeah. That's the movie logic right there. It fits. Um, you know, no reward is worth this. And then, well, in Last Jedi, first thing he does is asks where Rey is because he just woke up and he doesn't know where she is and he still has the hots for her because, you know, why wouldn't he? It's Daisy Ridley. Um, and then he just kind of has to look out for her for the movie and then, you know, finally sees her at the end. Um, it's in Rise of Skywalker where he goes full on, like, shouting Ray. <laughs> like, jeez, imagine how bad it is when you have to give your character, like, what, one, two, like, how many cases of the not gaze did they give Finn? I feel as if it was, it was like he had, like, at least three love interests in that movie. There was Rose, Ray, and, um, Lando's not daughter, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. The smart core, which you should. <laughs> it's like you said, Dothamir will be your grave. O okay, yeah. This would be the part if we were doing what everyone refers to as Marvel humor, where I would say, oh, I like her. <laughs> yeah, I do like her. But yay, we've beat this guy. And now we can, uh, get uh, the holocron or the no, unlock the vault so, so that we can be given passage through the vault to the holocron. I, I'll be honest, I kind of tuned out when they were explaining the fetch quest at the start of the game. It was like, get things to open thing, right? Get the key to open door. Okay, that's basic video game logic. I can understand that. Point me in the direction of said key, good sir, and I shall go fetch said key. And, uh, yeah, you guys like my drip? I, I would have changed around, but, like, you don't really get much choices for the outfit. And I wanted the poncho to kind of match. And I like the idea of having the poncho because, you know, it gives me very man with no name, uh, good, the bad, and the ugly vibes. That is a good thing, you know? Like, obviously, Star Wars had lots of influence from Western movies at the time, which were already inspired by Eastern samurai movies, so now it was like combining the Westerns and the Easterns, and it was in outer space, which is up, so I guess that makes Star Wars a northern, and it is very north, because Canada is in Star Wars, you know, and Hoth, right? Frozen Wasteland, Tundra. <laughs> yeah. But uh, then here we go, we are once again still trying to convert our Sundere, right? Um, I think we're doing a good job. Yay, she's gonna join us on the quest, right? Because we need more companions. So that is good. Though I feel I like Night Sister Marin, because of course, you know, who doesn't love a good, uh, you know, uh, hard exterior, soft interior, goth girl witchiness with a heart of gold, and uh, who, you know, learns to have feelings. That's always a classic story. We love it, right? This is the story of my life, I'm sure. Or is it Beauty and the Beast? Um, so, yeah, this is cute. Very cute, right? No kiss. <laughs> but, um, like, again, is it like, are we gonna do 
the, 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 the can't love thing in the sequel. I don't know, I hope not, and please don't force in a generic love triangle in the sequel. This isn't Dead Space 3. Cool. Yeah, so don't tell me. I want to find out what happens myself. But I hope we get more of her, because, you know, she's cool, but isn't this game for very little in terms of being a companion, so I, I took uh, every interest, you know, like Legion in Mass Effect 2, Legion criminally underused. Um, so thank you all the, you know, data miners who mined all of his hidden dialogue. So many great moments. Like, these facilities are inadequate. <laughs> so we get to the vault and open it to get the holocron. And then as we're there, there's a weird mirror, you know, because again, weird dark side, light side force visions. And this is a pretty cool way to show it. I very much like this sequence. Um, that basically you run around seeing weird visions of like what would happen if we took the holocron and that is we take the holocron and we start training Jedi but eventually the Empire still hunts us down uh, and then you know they start killing all the younglings and uh, if we surrender to become an Inquisitor then maybe we shall be you know the, the, they'll be spared which, of course, you know, is a lie, but he has no choice. And, yeah, then they're all of them in the prison. And, again, they kind of alluded this to uh, Kenobi with all the Jedis and younglings being imprisoned in that weird Inquisitor facility. Um, I'm just wondering if this is all going to be built up for explaining how Palpatine returns, so it will no longer be somehow. It'll be, well, if you watch this one random background scene of Season 3 of a show... Then you will know. Oh well. And I love this, you know, like everything goes dark, dark, and a uh, lightsaber to illuminate your surroundings. Oh, it's a red lightsaber. And now I've got, you know, badass Inquisitor outfit. Like, ah, oh, why does all the Jet, the Sith stuff look so cool? <laughs> like, I know that's, that's the point. You know, it's meant to look cool and badass, so you're more on their side, right? Like that other group of not good people who had a fashion designer work with them to design their outfits, you know, the ones, right? <laughs> the ones who we need to respect their feelings, apparently. Yeah, so again, very great light side versus dark side moment, and this is going to be the key catalyst in Cal's decision at the end. Which is weird, I guess it's, I don't know if it's just a different audience, or maybe this game did a better job of explaining it, but it's funny how you play through so many games where the character works to do a thing and they end up changing their mind at the end. And with so many other games, it seems like it's A-OK -okay, um, if the character does that, right? It's OK that Joel decided to not uh, deliver the cure that was Ellie to the Fireflies. It's OK that Cal destroys the holocron. But it's not okay that Ellie doesn't kill Abby. No, her having a change of heart was wrong. I don't know, man. I don't know. I know not everyone was a fan of my Last of Us video, but hey, I'm just telling it like it is. I enjoyed both games. I don't love them. I don't hate them. And the plot decisions that they made, while I don't know if they were executed to the best extent they could, I was okay with. But I'm also the guy that likes Alien 3 a lot. Um, and The Fountain and Cloud Atlas. So what do I know, right? But, uh, yeah, no more badass helmet for her, just shown full on, you know, goth glory. <laughs> and, uh, alright, we doing this, let's go. This is fun, because this is kind of the teaser for what her fight is going to be like in the Inquisitor Fortress, but also I feel like her moveset isn't too complex as that fight, so you do kind of steamroller a bit at least in my opinion I did especially when I went to a Kimbo dual lightsaber but again it does suck that you only do like a little mini fight and um, I guess it is nice though that it's not like that you lost the fight in the cutscene like you won but she had a trick up her sleeve you know and that was that her, uh, her lightsaber pulled a U2 Apple Music thing and, uh, you know, uh, freely downloaded all of uh, the lightsaber's memories, uh, you know, onto his iPhone. <laughs> yeah, that, 
that's, that's how it is. <laughs> Remember that? That was a crazy time, right? That was getting, that was, when was that? Like 2014, I think it was. That getting close to 10 years since the U2 Apple Music album incident. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, so, wh yeah, what is it? She's just like, there's the bad memories and the lightsaber, and I guess he doesn't have control of his force power to, like, look at force memories. It just kind of overwhelms him. Um, you know, it's like James Bond having a gun that only works to his fingerprint, or like, you know, Batman having a contingency plan if someone grabs his grappling hook, right? You know, is there prep time? Is there prep time? That's always the big question when it comes to Batman. Because he's prepared for everything, right? Oh, how about that Flash movie, man? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Something about the trailers for that Flash movie just seems, um, how shall I say it? Tryharding. You know? Like, they're, they're really desperate to, uh, to try to get me to watch it by being like, look, guys, we've got Michael Keaton in it, and we're doing, like, you know, like the, the Spider-Man No Way Home thing that you liked that movie, right? <laughs> uh, and yeah, here we see Trilla's memories of her fully becoming the Inquisitor, right? And see her seeing what has happened to her apprentice. And again, no. <laughs> right? Every Star Wars has someone yelling no. It's practically tradition, right? I mean, I know people have done the compilations of I've got a bad feeling about this. Which is a great line, a classic line. Um, good callback. Um, but I want to know all the times someone has shouted, No! <laughs> it's funny because it gets attributed to Darth Vader and, and Revenge of the Sith, but it happens all the time. Unfortunately, it also happens in Return of the Jedi. The worst change ever. I watched the Disney Plus versions um, because I wanted to com be able to compare them to the you know, original versions. Because if I watch Star Wars, I'm usually watching the despecialized edition, right? That's, that's the, the objectively best way to watch the movie. Um, it's either that or get out your VHS copy, which I still have. Um, yeah, so Disney Plus Star Wars is bad. It sucks because it's like they, they, they didn't really change much that was good from the Blu-ray, right? Maybe like a little continuity error fix here and there. But, um, yeah. Oh, well. Maybe next version will improvement and also Disney+. Plus. When are you going to get the extended versions, the Alien movies on there? I've already got the Blu-ray, so it's fine by me, but still, like... People are going to watch Alien 3 thinking that it sucks, and maybe for lots of people it does, but there's that assembly cut out there that I swear by, right? I think it's pretty good. Anyway, now we have big emotional moment, uh, because Seer is going to knight us as a Jedi. It is official. Now, I wonder, though, this the base... Inquisitor base, is this also the exact same one that we see in Kenobi? Um, or is it um, just, you know, happens to be a similar location, similar planet? Uh, I don't know. But, yeah. Oh, this is it. They bring out the John Williams, the Force theme, and Seer finally uses the Force again. Yeah. You know what? I wasn't the biggest fan of these characters when uh, we started. I thought they were, you know, serviceable, all right. But man, moments like this, this is where it's at for me. I can't, I feel like the, the, the interwebs didn't sell me properly on this. You could have just said, yeah, it's got feels and stuff, and you'll really care about the characters. And, uh, yeah, I'll take it. This is awesome, man. More of this theme, please. This is what it's all about. So that's it. We're ready. We're gonna go fight. Take the fight to the Empire and rescue the Holocron. Yeah, it's gonna be good times, man. Good times. So, last thing 
resolve. Um, so you can do, you know, just all of the same and it looks pretty good. Um, or you can kind of mix it up a bit. So, you know, my challenge was mixing it up in a way that incorporated uh, as many different elements so I can say that the lightsaber embodies all of them. And, uh, yeah, this is what I went with, so I don't know if that really matters much, but it's a feature they put in the game, so we're going with it. Can't wait to play Survivor and climb to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro just to find out how to do a dirt stash for facial hair. So, we get to the Inquisitor's base. It's fun. It's a difficult bit. There's lots of enemies they throw at you. Tons of those, um, you know, the, the, the purge troopers, is it, with, like, the the purple shocks and stuff. I'm like, okay, you know, come on, let's go. <laughs> Get in there, man, you can do this. <laughs> Big dramatic entrance, right? Because, uh, yeah, spoiler alert, I did not beat this fight on the first try. Wow, what are the odds? This was, I think, the most difficult, difficult time I had in a fight in the game. I probably died, like, four or five times. Um... And it's just annoying, because, like, sometimes stuff can get, like, real buggy here. Like, I remember I had a fight where I was spamming heal, and BD1 wouldn't heal. Or then, like, I don't know, there's, like, a bit you'll see where, like, a probe droid shows up. And it's like I was trying to force pull it, but, like, it wouldn't target that. It would target her. I was trying to deflect, and the deflect was off. And, like, you know, Trill is just relentless. Like, you don't get time to heal. <laughs> like, you heal, and then you're back in the fight. And then, this is the other thing, like, I'm wondering if it was, like, that my dodge timing was wrong, or perhaps it was running out of stamina, because I know your block is kind of limited here or there, depending on how much stamina you have. Oh yeah, and there's that jump trick, which is annoying when she does it at point blank range, which happens a lot in this fight. Yeah. I don't know exactly how the, the stamina works. I never really paid attention. I kind of just spammed block and attacked when I could, which definitely didn't work all the time. Especially when uh, Trilla's unblockable attacks kind of come right out of nowhere. Um, but it's nice because you get an upgrade that lets you recover force energy from using a stim, which is great. Because otherwise you gotta do like good blocks and stuff like that, right? Like managing your soul in Hollow Knight, which was easy for me because I like never used any of the, the spells. The game gives you all these cool spells and you just don't even bother with them. So this is yeah, the probe droid part coming up where she just randomly spams lightsaber throw and it's just such an odd segment of the fight. I don't know. I, I guess it's a thing. <laughs> so here I'm trying, like, okay, I'll lock onto the guy. No, no, lock onto the guy. No, no, but I blocked that one. You do not. Okay, lock onto the probe droid, please. Okay, wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> Why didn't I block that one? <laughs> nope, I blocked that. I didn't jump that. Okay, good. I got him. <laughs> Honestly, that's the hardest part, is that, like, this probe droid, he really wanted to do his job well, because it's, like, perfectly in sync with, um, you know, not being able to dodge her attacks as well, and she does lots of damage, so I'm glad I did not play this on the highest difficulty setting, <laughs> but it was a fun fight, nonetheless, don't get me wrong, great fight, good times, um, I don't know, though, which is my favorite fight in the game, though, I like this one because the emotional stakes, and you know, it's the final battle. That's always good. This is where I thought, okay, like, I'm gonna actually have to finish the second health bar, this, or the second half of the health bar, right? Yeah. But, uh, we're trying to snap her out of it, and it's not working. <laughs> thing I also wonder, maybe we'll see if it's a thing in Jedi Survivor, but like, so she's had the holocron here for a while. Like, you know, it took us a bit to, uh, go after her, and, uh, oh, she's got, like, some weird, like, health drain attack. Oh, and then she kicks me. Yeah, I'll step on me harder. What? <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, did they, like, you know, copy that holocron data yet? I don't know. <laughs> I just know that I'm not doing the best right now. Especially when, uh, apparently that dodge doesn't work. But it's okay. I still have health. I still have health. <laughs> Not much left, but I still have a bit of it. 
on if the Empire copied it over, then we'd be one step behind them. I'd also like, you know, is the fact that Luke seems to be the only main Jedi, like, um, it, it, that we, all these characters are gonna die? I don't know, I guess we'll find out. You know, it's it's because these stories weren't written yet, you, you just kind of got to accept it, that's how it is. Like, like as a Transformers movie coming out and it takes place in the 90s. But yet it made it seem like in 2007 they were all crashing to Earth and it was like, first time, I don't know. But all I know is that, that was very clutch, because I was out of healing stims. That could have gone very bad. And yet you see her is here now. So we got the holocron, and all goes well that ends well. Yay. But what do we do with Trillo? Yeah, I don't know, I just, like, don't get me wrong, I, I liked Moses and Grimm as a third sister, right? Um, she was good, but just, I, I didn't really care in the end about, like, I thought that was the end of her story, was her getting killed by Vader, but she shows up to go chase down Luke, to then change her mind at the last minute, and then just leave, like, I get what they were going for, but... It's almost like they were like, well, we can't kill her. Gotta keep her alive for future installments. But we need something for her to do after she's failed to defeat Vader and shown that the Grand Inquisitor is still around. Also, what was the point of keeping him around? He hasn't done anything yet. Yet, though. We'll see, you know. But uh, it's interesting because this looks like maybe a bit where she's going to have a uh, redemption and change her mind. And then, of course, the music and the sound and... Damn, that is such a good facial capture of showing the true terror on her face, right? He is here. He is coming. Yep. Doesn't even say a word, just, yep. <laughs> and great use of the soundtrack for this bit as well. I also like how it's not like it's a joke or anything that he says, just, you know, that doesn't look good. Like, it's not making that as a quippy joke, just like, yeah, this looks bad, and yeah, it is bad. And, oh, we get to see Vader in full-on badass mode. And, you know, Anakin's Dark Deed soundtrack, he doesn't care, he just yeets Seer around. Yeah, it does beg the question, if Vader is all powerful and crazy like this, why doesn't he go, like, more insane? Like, I'm waiting for them, the same guys that did the A New Hope reimagined fight. I want to see them, like, I don't want this, but it, I'm wondering if they would do, like, reworking the Empire fight so that Vader doesn't just throw, like, three little pieces of machinery around, and he just throws, like, an entire, you know, spaceship's worth of parts at him. Could be interesting. I love this. Oh, I've got him on the edge. No, I don't, actually. <laughs> Yep, they all saw how popular Vader's Rogue One Rampage was. Um, and then just decided to go all out with that for this one. So again, it's like, does it make sense? Is it too much compared to, um, you know, what um, original trilogy Vader was like? Eh, maybe, maybe, maybe. But is it cool and awesome and do I love it? Well, yeah. And, oh, didn't get him with the plunging attack. That would have been the most reliable move in the game. Oh. And, yeah, Vader also doing his classic thing of still just standing around. <laughs> Maybe he just really wants us to surrender, you know? Look at He doesn't care. He just keeps going. I love it. it yeah, so many times in the original trilogy, you see characters just kind of stop when, like, they could do more. But, um, yeah, surprise, Mo Sakura, we ain't out of the woods yet. <laughs> I love it. It's got just absolutely relentless, like you need Vader to instill the terror. And, no, not BD-1, not the droid. <laughs> but I love this, like, you know, we get a hit in on him. That's good. <laughs> and again, just force grabbing the lightsaber, like, everything about this sequence is great. Even if it doesn't make sense compared to that. And see, there you go. Turn on a light. 
lightsaber with the force. <laughs> but it's okay, Sears okay. I don't know how she's okay. She looked like she got heated into that lava pretty good. And I also like how Vader's doing his um, one-handed empire dueling strategy. You know, his, I don't care, I'm dueling with you. <laughs> and this thing, I guess it's like, well, you know, using the force to kill a guy is bad, but I've killed them already. But I guess it's like you have to kill them, but not with the dark side, you know? Like, you can kill him by beating him with a duel, but you can't kill him by using magic space powers to crush his lungs, or what's left of them. I don't know, I mean, I feel like if we did this now, like, you know, we could save ourselves a bunch of stuff, like, you know, just be a hard cut to credits directed by George Lucas, or Irving Kirshner, or Richard Marcon. Funny how the best Star Wars movie is the one where George Lucas didn't direct it and he didn't write the screenplay, just the story. Interesting. But yeah, that's a fun way to know about it there. And that's that for main bits of the story. We just got the final cutscene to wrap it on up. I'm not going to bother including all the credits, I do that a lot. And then I feel I just rant for too long about stuff that doesn't matter. And it's not necessarily important to the video. We're just going to end it where we end it. And also it's because credits are very long in modern games these days. I don't want to have to commit to ranting to an extra half hour of stuff on top of the stuff I already ranted about. So the main point is that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is a good game and I enjoyed it. Um, it could have been a lot better in many ways and the three main games that it has elements pieced together from uh, does not do those as well as those original games, you know? It doesn't have as much fun boss variety as uh, Dark Souls. It doesn't have as much of a fluid combat system as Sekiro. Uh, and it does not have as good of platforming and movement controls as Uncharted. And, oh, this cute hugs. We like hugs. Uh, and then, well, we could also classify, classify Metroidvania as a separate thing. Dark Souls was already the uh, perfect embodiment of 3D Metroidvania games like Symphony of the Night. Um, yeah, the, the Metroidvania isn't as good because sometimes it's goodies that increase your health. Most of the time, it's chests that just simply give you another cosmetic item, which I'm not so concerned about in the grand scheme of things, so, yeah. Oh, well. Ultimately, I'll take a game that's doing something in the right direction, you know, than in the wrong direction. So, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna play the sequel. Not right at this moment, I think. Um, and, you know, again, if you did make it to the end of the video, please don't spoil the game for me. Um, I'd like to go in as blind as possible, right? And I'm sure just posting this video will change my algorithm to give me all those spoiler videos where people intentionally put a spoiler in the thumbnail. Thanks, random internet people. <laughs> but yeah, and this means videos will be less frequent, so please be patient. I'll try to get you some good stuff. It's a lot of talking and a lot of editing to do, but most of you seem like it is worth it in the end, so that's good. <laughs> 